Hello, everybody. This is Tony Turner, and welcome to the market now as of Friday, September the 11th, at about 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Before we start, please know that all of us at TonyTurner.com are honoring all those fallen heroes on today, the anniversary of 9-11. God bless. And now on to the stock market. U.S. stocks are positive so far today at the end of another volatile week as Oracle delivered solid quarterly results while data suggested a gradual pace of economic revival from the coronavirus-led downturn. Economically sensitive materials and industrials are doing the best among the major S&P sectors today so far. So now let's go on to three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. First of all, as we always do, we're going to look at a daily chart of the S&P 500 spider, symbol SPY. As you all know, this is the tracking ETF that follows our S&P 500 index. Now, when I captured this chart today, the SPY was con continuing to sidestep. Let me get my cursor here. The SPY was continuing to sidestep right here as you can see it. And it's just atop the green line. The rising green line is the 50-day moving average. Uh, it made another new all-time closing high up here on September 2nd at $357.50. That was right here, September 2nd. On the September 3rd, it started falling, fell down, kept going through the 20-day moving average, kept falling, falling, falling for about the last week and change. And again, today is now when I captured this chart, trading at $334.56. Um, now, the next level down from here would be about, if I could draw a straight line, it would be, it would be about 320, 321 would be the next support line. The 50-day moving average, again, is the green line. That has been pretty well drawing a trend line for us. I drew a blue trend line, but you can see the 50-day has been drawing a pretty good trend line since May. Uh, that's a good thing. And the 50-day moving average is now coming in at $331.65. So you can call it 331 whatever. Uh, we still have a higher low here, and what's the defin definition of an uptrend? Higher lows and higher highs, so we still have a higher low here. This is not really a low right here. Don't think of it that way. So we're still in an uptrend here as long as the SPY can stay above the 50-day moving average. That's a good thing. Uh, a lot of industrial, uh, excuse me, industrial, a lot of um Institutional traders consider the 50-day moving average to be an important average to stay above, So, um, and, and, and so it is. So we, we'd like for the SPY, if it has to bottom out here and chop around, fine. But we do not know this is the bottom of this move, and we will not know until the SPY moves up and makes, once again, a higher low and a higher high. So we don't know yet. Please don't. This may or may not be the bottom of this move. Uh, now, September is historically a rocky month, and it, that's particularly if August was a positive month. And we can see here that August was indeed a delightful month with everything moving higher almost. So remember, the market cannot go higher without moving lower first. Uh, the markets of industrialized uh, nations move in cycles. Cycles go up and down. They don't just go up, and thankfully, they don't just go down. So we can't start moving up and, and continue to make new trends until we get some breathing room here. You could also uh, make an analogy here for a long-distance runner. Even long-distance runners have to stop and rest and get some sleep. So this was a lot of fun. It was terrific, but you have to know, you know, think about it. We do have a pandemic going on here. So it, 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 the market really did get a little bit ahead of itself. I was kind of in a warning mood there for the last few weeks. We talked about the on balance volume down here being in the overbought position over the 70 line. So uh, it, it makes perfect sense that the market has to take a pause and or a breather here. Please trade carefully, and keep track of your protective stops. Our next chart today is the Invesco QQQ. 
Uh, as you all know, this represents the NASDAQ 100, which is a major index in the market. And its, holding, its holdings are those top uh, large cap momentum stocks, many times tech stocks, the leaders that have been moving up so dramatically uh, in this in this uh, move up since most of the market started moving uh, up again on March 23rd. So we can see that the QQQ here made the last all-time closing high was on September 2nd at $302.76. Then like the SPY, uh, it started falling on September 3rd. Now it's down about 10% off of those all-time highs. It is in what we call correction territory. Of course, correction territory is 10% or lower off all-time highs. It is like the SPY sitting on its 50-day moving average, but it's kind of, at the moment, it's kind of slipping below that line. So when I captured this chart today, the QQQ was trading at $270.67 at the moment, just below the 50-day moving average, which is coming in at $271.38. Now we can see our next support line here at about $264. Uh, then we can go down to um, to just about 259 here. We can keep going on down to um, 251. So lots of support here, potential support for sure. We can see how the on balance volume became overbought here when we saw it. We knew that that was a signal that the market was just getting overextended, and that at some point. People are going to start traders. Every people are going to start selling, right? Uh, that just makes perfect sense. That's exactly what happened, and so now the RSI is no longer overbought. In fact, it's down at about 43. So uh, this will—it's it, no fun while it's happening, but it should give us some really awesome opportunities uh, when the QQQ finds its leveling out point here and starts higher. Now, remember, if the QQQ drops dramatically or drops below the 50-day moving average, again, coming in at $271 right now, if it drops below that and continues, it could take a leg down. And, you know, sometimes the best position when the market starts looking like this, if the S&P 500 follows suit, the best position many times can be in cash or at least on the sidelines, at least on the sidelines. Um, so it, it's hard to pick a bottom, and, and certainly uh, we don't know where that one is yet. So please pay attention to your stops, and again, please trade wisely. Our final chart today is a daily chart of the Global S U.S. Infrastructure Development ETF. Uh, the symbol is PAVE, <laughs> apt, apt symbol, isn't it? PAVE has 93 holdings. Top holdings are Fastenal, Kansas City Southern, Rockwell Automation, United Rentals, Eaton Corporation, Union Pacific, and one I like, Trimble. Pave, uh, Pave I'm going to call it Pave today. Pave originated in March of 2017, so it's a relatively new ETF, uh, and it made an all-time high way back here. Uh, we can, I don't think you can see it on the chart, but it made an all-time high. Uh, in, in December of 2019 at about $88, and it traded sideways after that. Uh, then, like with everybody else, the PAVE took a nosedive on the heels of the coronavirus news, fell from the highs of 18 all the way down to the lows here to $9.77 on March the 23rd. That was quite the day, March the 23rd. Uh, most everything made a low on March the 23rd, so... Global X PAVE lost about, it lost 50% of its value, but then started recovering, gapped up there, and started recovering very, very nicely, if certainly choppily, if there's such a word as choppily, I don't think so. Maybe we'll invent it today. Uh, so it, 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 but it did get going again in May. It rose up pretty dramatically. Look there, got overbought. So of course, it was overextended and the sellers came in. Since then, the pattern has been tightening up a little bit, and it's been pretty much walking up the green line. It's 50-day moving average. So this is not a day trading stock. It doesn't have the amount of volume, but it is something you may want to trade just using the 50-day moving average. 
Now today when I captured this chart, PAVE was trading at $16.96. Just below that you see the rising 50-day moving average coming in at $16.39. Going into the coming week, uh, if the PAVE can remain above the 50-day moving average, the green line, if it can remain above that, and the market remains, I'm going to say reasonably calm. Let's say it doesn't take a nosedive or a dumpster dive. If the market can remain reasonably calm and the PAVE can remain above the 50-day moving average, uh, I may add a position of it to my portfolio. I'm going to place an initial stop right below the 50-day moving average at $16. I realize this is a tight stop, but to tell you the truth right now, I am in no mood to be generous, so I'm keeping tight stops on everything. Um, if or when the PAVE breaks above 18, um, I may add to my position, and of course by then my stop will be turned into a trailing stop. So you may want to keep an eye on PAVE in the coming week. And now, before we go on to final thoughts, please know that for a limited time only, and this will be ending pretty soon, uh, we are offering all of my popular online trading programs at a 20% discount. So if you want to discover my simple yet very powerful strategies for swing trading, trend trading, and much more, uh, knowing that these strategies will help you increase your gains and certainly save you money. Just go to the link on this screen or click on the orange button below to check it out. Do that. And now for final thoughts. Today we are asking ourselves, when I trade, am I attuned to the market and its trends and moves? Am I attuned to the market? As traders, we want to attune ourselves to the market's moves, and especially in times like these. We want to feel the market's ebb and flow. The trouble is, we are exposed to a million messages by way of the internet, television, and radio even every day. Our senses are bombarded with images and ideas, and they come at us nonstop. Now, as humans, we've learned to become effective with the messages we are confronted with because there are so many and we tend to do one of two things we tend to either block them or fast forward them this is called a learned response <laughs> for example say your wife or your husband starts to tell you something if you have a lot on your mind you will either pretend to listen but you really don't hear at all and that's called blocking or you move into fast forward thinking you already know what he or she is going to say, and again, you don't listen. Now, many times in the stock market, we think we know what is going to happen next, sort of like in the fast forward, but we really do not know where price is going next. Now, if it moves the way we believe it will, then all is well, but if it doesn't, we are usually not well served to block the message it is giving us. Further, if we own a strong belief system going to that, that a stock is going to rise in price, we say, okay, that's going to go higher no matter what, and it doesn't, we will believe that it will rise even though it progressively falls lower. So on that note, please strive to keep a nimble mindset. Yes, you have to assess the facts and charts. And yes, you have to believe that there are opportunities in front of you that have the potential for making you money. Still, you want to avoid the human reactions of fast forwarding, believing you know what's going to happen next, or blocking, believing a stock price will rise even though it is falling. Flow nimbly with the market, with the market. Trade what is and keep an open mind at all times. So finally... If you want to become a consistently winning trader, check out our 20% off sale and our simple yet powerful online trading programs that will help you increase your profits from now on. Again, from swing trading to bottom fishing to trend trading and more, just click on the button below. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.